Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south. More specifically, we are in uh, Kissimmee, Florida. And you know what? It's time. It is time, uh, time to head home. I have been on the road, I think, 20, 22 days now. As uh, we get near the the end of uh, of January, and um, you know, I moved back full time into my house very recently, just uh, just this November. Of course, never really stopped traveling, and um, you know, trying to work out, trying to work out a, a balance between home, the amount of time I'm on the road, the amount of time that I'm out filming, and um, yeah, so far. We have, been, we have been filming more than we've been home. I was home a week at the beginning of January, then, then uh, 22 days out on the road. I think it's just really time. I almost, um, I almost went home uh, a few days ago. I originally was going to uh, dry, drive home to watch the Royal Rumble with Jen. I got the idea. Why don't we? Do, why don't you just come here to Florida and we'll go. We'll go see it live. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of very, very intense days here in Florida. But um, I think, I think I need to go home. I think I need to be at my house at least for a uh, for a few days. I've got an idea. I've got something cooking in my brain. Something I think I want to do after I get home. A little uh, spur of the moment road trip to uh, check off kind of a bucket list item. But uh, we'll see if that comes together. But right now, I need to go home. I think I need. I think it is time to leave Florida. Time to leave the long, lonesome road for a little while. But um, I think uh, I think I think we gotta go home. So in order to get home, we've gotta hop back on to that long, lonesome road. And, uh, and head home. I usually, usually drive home to Florida one day. Um, it's about about nine hours from Central Florida, from the Orlando Kissimmee area, back to my uh, back to my house in North Carolina. So uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna set off on our voyage. So please follow me. I had to stop over here at the McDonald's on International Drive. I actually, um, not that hungry. I don't think I'm actually gonna eat anything, but I wanted to check on uh, Mac Tonight. I heard a rumor that the Mac Tonight animatronic was uh, was actually working, and I've never seen it move, so I figured we'd, uh, we'd just take a peek. As we're headed in, you can see that towering etching of Ronald McDonald here on the side of the building. It's very busy in here, but I'm gonna head upstairs to see uh, if Mac Tonight is working. All right, and uh, there is the Mac Tonight animatronic. They are blasting music. There's two speakers there blasting out music, but uh, his face isn't moving. He's not actually singing, so uh, I don't know if he, if, he, if he works or not. So yeah, he actually is playing the Mac Tonight audio, uh, audio dialogue. He was just uh, referring to himself but it does not look like he, the face is not moving, the body is not moving. So, uh, I'm, gonna th I'm, thinking he's, I'm thinking he's not operational. I think he makes, he sing, he, 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 they play the audio, but he doesn't actually, uh, doesn't actually move. Yeah, I've been hoping, hoping to get out here and able to see him actually perform. I've never seen, never seen an animatronic actually move. I've heard rumors that it does move, that it does play. There's been two different times where I've come and ate a meal at McDonald's in this dining room right here and just sat there and stared at him hoping he would come on, hoping he would move. Now, I'd never seen them play the audio before either. Just, just sat up here quietly. So I'm thinking they played the audio, but he didn't actually move. So I'm thinking the animatronic's broken. If anyone knows more or knows if there is a way to actually see him 
move, please leave a comment, leave a comment in the comment section for next time I'm here in, uh, in Orlando. And uh, maybe someday, I don't know, maybe they'll fix him. Maybe he'll move. I, I just don't know. This has been a, this has been a, uh, a constant struggle with me trying to see uh, the match tonight. Animatronic. If you definitely remember those commercials where he would uh, sing and play the piano. Some cla classic, uh, classic 80s commercials. And uh, really cool to see, just to see the uh, Mac Tonight figure. He's kind of just a lost piece of uh, advertising history. But um, yeah, I don't know, I think he's broken. I don't know if he will ever, I don't know if he'll ever dance or sing again. Looks like they do periodically play the audio, but, uh, but no real movement. Got all the playground equipment here, but be careful. This is Florida. Have a uh, big mean gator lurking around the uh, playground equipment here. Figure since we're over here, we will uh, run across the street and uh, pop into uh, Hulk Hogan's wrestling shop over there. Yeah, it always seems a little quiet over here at the uh, Hulk Hogan's wrestling shop. It's been a little while since I've popped in. See some pictures of uh, Hulk Hogan facing some of his uh, biggest rivals here. Andre the Giant, the Ultimate Warrior, King Kong, Bundy there. And here he is in, his, uh, in the NWO days, the Hollywood Hogan days. Oh, and just remember, no public restrooms, brother. Yeah, they have some, uh, some wax figures in here. They used to have a wax figure for like every stage of uh, Hulk Hogan's career. Um, they're not all here, but they do still have some of them. I believe this is uh, from the Rocky, Rocky movie where he played Thunderlips, the ultimate man. Yeah, these, this is actually amazing, amazing figure. Very, very, very hyper, hyper realistic. This is, uh, says this is made by Walt Wizard. So, yeah, very, very high quality wax figure there. See the NWO motorcycle here. And some other uh, memorabilia here up on the wall. This uh, NWO shirt here, it says, uh, it's Osama Hulk Hogan. He says, wore the shirt on the Raw for my birthday celebration. Party, it says, party's over, Grandpa. Yeah, I remember Brock Lesnar came out and he, uh, and he, he said, party's over, Grandpa, to, uh, to Hulk Hogan. These cardboard cutouts of various wrestlers it says you can buy me and take me home. So you can have a uh, a Jeff Hardy in your living room. I think this is a uh, Carmella. This is a custom Ric Flair championship belt. That's actually pretty cool. Ric Flair, the Nature Boy, it says on it. I would touch this, but it says please do not touch the belt. Yeah, it says that uh, this ring here is for taking pictures with the belts. So uh, if one person can uh, can get in the picture for twenty dollars, then uh, ten dollars for uh, for add people to the picture. So you can climb in this ring, hold one of the belts, and uh, get your picture with these these uh, cover cutouts here. See the ring here, it's actually divided into two halves, the two halves of Hulk Hogan's career. The Hulkamania half and the NWO half. Over there, standing on the other side of the ring, it's Hulk Hogan's uh, manager, Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. Another wax figure over there. And then over on this side of the ring, we uh, have Ric Flair there. Actually, it looks like Ric Flair may be wearing a Hulk Hogan wig. This uh, this figure isn't quite as realistic as the other uh, the Hulk Hogan figure over there. Although uh, this still still looks like a better Ric Flair than they had in the uh, in the Iron Claw movie. Got different items here under the glass. I think that's a turnbuckle there. We got uh, these autograph belts. I think these belts are for sale. These are replicas here. Some Hollywood Hogan boots, some some of the red and yellow boots there, even a uh, deep cut the uh, Mr. America weight belt there, one of his very short-lived gimmicks. 
Yeah, it looks like they do sell uh, quite a few of these belt replicas. They look uh, very nice. See the NWO version of the title there. All these different weight belts. And then Hulk Hogan's uh, war bonnet that he wore for a uh, brief period of time. crossing up there. I like to stop at these Florida Citrus Centers on my way out of Florida. These are on this side of the street. You only see them when you're leaving Florida. They don't have them uh, on the other side of the highway where you are entering Florida. So I guess this is where you stop to get your souvenirs, get your last souvenirs, and get maybe a bag of oranges to take uh, back home with you. And as you're driving on the highway, you see signs promising live baby gators here at the Citrus Center. You can, see, you can tell these are baby gators because they're, because they're wearing diapers. And I definitely wanted to stop by because I uh, bought a snow globe here of uh, alligator inside of an alligator's mouth uh, last time I was here. And it actually got broke during the move. It got uh, the glass broke. So I was gonna see if they had a, another one uh, here at the souvenir shop. See the big alligator standing up right there of course I've mentioned this before any you know any good tourist shop in Florida is gonna sell gator heads someday I want to get one of these uh, one of these big giant ones see this gator head here is actually turned into a keychain rack and the keychains themselves are little gator claws over here are the promised baby alligators oh see them back there Unfortunately, they're not wearing uh, diapers or bonnets like they are on the side, but they're, uh, they're still pretty cute. It says, we are not for sale. You can't uh, buy a baby alligator to uh, take home with you. You used to be able to back in the day, back in the golden age of Florida tourism, uh, fruit shops and uh, gift shops on the way out of Florida would actually sell the baby alligators. People would take them home and then not know what to do with them. That's a, that's a long-standing rumor that people would take them back home and then flush them down the toilet because they didn't know what to do with them. And that's the uh, legend that that's why there is uh, alligators in the uh, New York sewer system. And of course, you can take home a, uh, a alligator souvenir or an alligator snow globe. See the sparkles there? You've got an alligator on an alligator's back there. A lot of alligator snow gloves. A little bobbly gator there. I don't know, this gator here, like he could hold something. He could put something in his hands, like uh, like your pencil. But I am so happy. They actually do have the snow globe that was broken, that uh, got broke during me and Jen's move. And uh, look at that. It's amazing. To me, this is it was the ultimate uh, alligator snow globe. It's you got an alligator base. It's got alligator in its mouth, and it's even got the old-fashioned snow globe snow. It's snowing here in Florida, so yeah, I'm gonna take one of these. Uh, you can take one of these home with me. Also, buy a lot of Disney merchandise here. Of course, a lot of people heading back home from Disney would stop here, and you know the, park, the merchandise at the park can be a little pricey. So this is a way to uh, to remember your trip without having to pay those uh, theme park prices. So many wonderful snow globe options, like a uh, sea turtle riding a Vespa. Oh, I love, I love these. Although I think I have a shark inside of a shark. There is the shark's mouth. A little shark inside the shark's mouth there. But this, uh, oh, this might be, this one's even better. You've got a shark with a little surfer, a little surfer in his mouth. If he's in a shark's mouth, it's snowing and he's surfing, and the surfer kind of looks like Jason Voorhees for some reason. I may, I may have to take this one home with me too. Another souvenir I'm a big fan of is shell people. Let's see the uh, different shell people there. There is a shell owl. Let's see all the different parts are different seashells coming together to make one owl. 
I think these are shell donkeys. With a basket of shells on their back. I don't know, just something about these looters reminds me of, uh, of growing up in the 80s. I feel like everyone had something like this in their house in the 80s. These southern bells made of shells. <laughs> shell bells. And then look at these guys here. Little shell men with the cigars in their mouth. Have some fish. Some fish uh, made of shells there. Yeah, look at these these puffer fish made of shells. I think these ones, these are these are hedgehogs made of shells. Although every little spike is an individual shell. It's a pirate map in a bottle. I don't know if uh, if that actually takes you somewhere like to a tiny. We don't know if you take the treasure map out of the bottle, if it like leads you to a tiny treasure somewhere. Some Florida ashtrays. This one is shaped like a toilet. It says rest your ash here. So what a great way to remember your uh, your Florida vacation. I love these shops. You see all the classic Florida souvenirs. The little coconut monkeys. I think this one's a bank. It's got a slit right there. I used to see these and they're actually be made into ashtrays. Like the belly would be open up into an ashtray. See the pirate coconuts there. <laughs> love those. Look at that, you mean a little coconut, a little coconut bear. So I got, I did get the uh, the, the alligator uh, snow globe and I got the shark, the shark with the surfer. I just, I couldn't pass that one up. And we got some oranges too. Got uh, four, we have four red navels. Generally likes, uh, likes the fresh oranges from Florida. They had a, a whole big giant bag for like $22, which I think is a good deal. I just don't know if we would be able to eat that many oranges. Another reason I really need to get home is I am running out of laundry. I've actually had to buy uh, several packs of underwear on this trip. Uh, this big mountain here. See, a lot of times I will like put my laundry here in the, like, the plastic bags in the hotel room, but this is just getting out of control. In fact, I think I have even more I have even more laundry piled up in the suitcase there. That big mountain of laundry. I need to get back to the house. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do laundry on the road, but it uh, it takes it takes uh, it takes some time and effort, and I'm usually filming out late, so it's hard to hard to bear down and 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 get that laundry done while I'm on the road trying to film. So I need to get back to my own washing machine and get all that washed. It's been a trip. It has been a true adventure. We have uh, been on the road for coming up on uh, close to three weeks. Close to three weeks since I left for the Choose My Adventure road trip. Of course, you know, you know, you, you can make plans, but uh, Mother Nature, the road itself, sometimes makes other plans. And uh, I know some people got a little disappointed that we weren't able to do more boating. We weren't able to do more cities on the Choose My Adventure road trip. And you know what happened is I got to Hot Springs, Arkansas, and it was it was cold and it was snowing and it was icing and about everything in the town was closed. There was very little I could do. Um, so I was looking at the next city to vote on. I was thinking about maybe going to St. Louis or Kansas City. Um, looking at other places in the country that we could drive towards. And I just looked at a web, the map the weather map and it was just a big purple blob. The purple means there's ice and snow and low, low temperatures. And I thought about maybe, maybe we could cross across Texas. Maybe we could um, get to Southern California and uh, where, it's, where it's warmer, where there was no snow. But I just didn't think crossing across Texas was a good idea, given that the whole state of Texas looked like it was going through uh, whatever else was going through, a lot of ice and snow. So I didn't think it was safe going that way. It wasn't safe, and at the same time, with the snow and the ice, there just simply would not be um, a lot to do, a lot of things that could be done. Things would be closed down. A lot of stuff is closed down in January anyways, and then you add in the unseasonable ice and, uh, and cold, and just more stuff was closed. When I was in Hot Springs, almost everything was shut down due, uh, due to the weather. 
and I figured it would just be more of the same. Um, yeah, again, I even thought about driving out in Colorado. My sister, sister was uh, was having a baby. I thought I would drive out to Colorado to see uh, to see the new baby, but um, I didn't think that was safe either. Um, just given you know the ice, the snow. Um, so I thought the only thing the only thing we could do here is just head where there's not ice, where there's not snow. Head where it's uh, where it would be safe to head, and um, that was Florida basically. So I just started heading to Florida, and uh, I talked to Adam once I had gotten into the state of Florida, and he had told me about the country bears, the country bears having their final day, and I'm like, I I, I got to be there. I got to be there to see, to see send off the country bears, and I'm really I'm really happy that I went there. Um, went there. Um, and just really had a great time, you know, being around other people who appreciated that and other people who uh, really, you know, were on the same wavelength really meant a lot to me. And, and I just thought it was a really, uh, really great, positive experience. But um, then I was going to head home the next day, but um, wanted to, well, I, I was really getting a little homesick at that point. I really wanted to, I thought, I was like, I'd really like to watch... Uh, the Royal Rumble with Jen, you know, me and Jen, both, both wrestling fans, and, um, we normally rent the pay-per-views and watch them together, we got a chance to go and see a, a live show last summer at, uh, in Toronto, went to the, uh, Scotiabank Arena to watch the Forbidden Door, the AEW New Japan show, which was just a lot of fun, and just fun being in that audience, being in the crowd, I love the energy, same with, like, the Country Bears, just anywhere where there's a lot of people that are excited about the same thing as you, um, just, it, it is really fun, like I said, when I went to the Royal Rumble, you know, I couldn't necessarily see the ring very well from where I was sitting, but just being around, being people, being excited, looking up in the stands and seeing how many people were there. I think there was a little under a little under 50,000 people there. I think I said in my video yesterday that there was 200,000 because I was way out of it. But no, I think it was 50,000 people. And that showed because there was no parking. Me and Jed got there just thinking you could park. I don't know. Probably my fault, just not being experienced enough. Um, I saw on Google Maps it looked like looked like Tropicana Field had a huge parking area, but which I think it actually does, but you know, 50,000 people will fill up a parking area. So we could not get into parking, didn't know where to go. Uh, some of the parking lots in downtown St. Petersburg were full. So finally we got a, uh, there was a police officer directing traffic. Finally we shouted out to her, where do we go to park? And she yelled out, she yelled out the name of the parking garage. We went straight there. It was about a 30 minute walk. The Royal Rumble had already started though, so we ended up getting an Uber, getting in, uh, missed a lot of the, the first uh, part of the show, but I think it was still worth it. I'm so glad I went. Um, had floor tickets, which was really exciting. Um, not a, not cheap, but decided to splurge, uh, to do something for me and Jen. And, um, I was thinking about vlogging it, but I just, I don't know, I just was exhausted from Gasparilla. I filmed Gasparilla that day, and I just wanted to enjoy the night with Jen, with the crowd, and be able to clap and cheer without having to worry about filming everything. And, you know, some people, I got some positive feedback. My video yesterday, people said that they'd like to see, they'd like to see wrestling vlogs. So I may, it may be something I explore in uh, the future. Just need to kind of plan out how I would present it, how I would vlog my experience. I think, I think it could be fun. It'd be fun just to do one to see how people like it. Uh, I know a lot of people don't care anything about wrestling and uh, probably wouldn't like the vlog, but you know, not everyone's gonna like every vlog. And uh, yeah, so now, now we head home. And like I said, I just, I really need to be home for a day or two. Um, it's been, it's been nice. It's been nice being back in the house. Like, um, you know, since my divorce, um, I'm trying to think, when was that? The 20, uh, I think that was, uh, getting the years, getting the years. I think very beginning of 2022, um, me and my wife separated, very end of, I think, 2021, um, that December, I went up and stayed with my mom's for Christmas, and then after that, I was trying to figure out where do I go, what do I do? Um, we thought about getting an apartment on my own, but I was like, no, I'm like, you know what? I travel for a living. 
I love to travel, so I'm just going to travel. And I did. I pretty much traveled two years solid. Um, you know, maybe a day or two here, maybe a week here. I think maybe there was maybe a two-week stay in um, somewhere. I don't remember where, but I may have been in one place for two weeks. Um, but other than that, I just traveled. I would visit Jen. Kind of created this triangle where I would visit Jen. I would stop at my uh, my mom's and then stay at um, at the house in North Carolina in the guest bedroom at my uh, where my ex-wife was living at the time. And um, yeah, I just traveled. Of course, you know, I, uh, you know, things happened. I met Jen. Met Jen uh, while I was traveling, and you know, we uh, things went really well between us. Uh, we got along really well. We still get along really well. And, um, you know, the, you know, presented the idea of, of, of her, you know, moving, moving down to, with me to North Carolina once I got the house back. Of course, that was a whole process in North Carolina. You have to be divorced for a whole year, or you have to be separated for a whole year before you can apply for, before you can do the divorce. And so, we waited out the year traveling, and then, man, divorce. Me and, me and Christy, you know, we didn't fight about anything in the divorce. We were able to agree on our own terms, but it's still, it's a hard process just on every level. Um, you know, it's scary. You know, starting over is scary always. You know, even if, even if you know it's the right thing, even if it's what you want, you know, it's, it's a, the future being uncertain. It's enough to stress out everyone. And a divorce is very expensive. Um, just a lot of things, a lot of things to take into consideration. Uh, you know, everything that's on the two people's names. We got cars, we got the house, we got legal bills, um, paying for the divorce, paying for the set, paying for the, the, the house stuff. It was a whole huge process. And then, you know, give Christy time to move out after I purchased the house. Um, you know, our daughter Annabelle didn't want, even though she was 18, did not want to didn't want to stay in the house by herself, which when I was 18, I would have loved that. So I don't know why, I don't know why she wanted someone to stay there, but so we agreed to have Christy stay there until Anna went to college. And then when Anna went to college, uh, beginning of the, beginning of the school year this year, then, um, you know, me and Jen, of course that was a busy time for me. So that was fall, I'm busy in the fall because I do the Halloween stuff, I'm busy in the summer because I do the state fairs. So November was the day that we picked. And uh, and that's when, you know, that's when the big the big move finally happened. So got in in November, stuck around a lot in December. And actually, like November and December, I got to spend more time with Jen at, you know, once than probably have in the past two years. But um, yeah, so finally, really finally get started to get unpacked, get moved in. Feel like you know even Jen was during November. We traveled November and then we uh, you know, we went on a road trip in December. So uh, yeah, we, we kind of moved. We kind of ended up going on a road trip in the middle, right in the middle of moving in. So uh, just been finishing up moving in at the beginning of January. I took a week off because YouTube having that taking the first week off to me made the most sense because um, I don't want to get too much behind the scenes. Cause I think it's boring, but. Um, you make the least amount of money off ad revenue in January. It's um, it drops off at the beginning of the year, so you're making probably at the beginning, first week of January, you're probably making half. If your video gets the same amount of views as it did in December, you're probably making half, if not less, on a video. So I'm like, if I'm gonna take time off, this will be the time I take off. So I took a took a week off in January. It was very nice to enjoy my home, but then turned around and went back right back into the grind, right back into, uh, into uh, traveling. The, the, the choose my adventure. Um, I know you guys, I know some people don't think, didn't think we did it long enough, but we got pretty far. You know, it's always exciting never knowing what city I'm gonna be in and having a plan on the fly. Um, that, you know, it has what Mother Nature sidetracked us. So going home now, um, I'm not gonna be home for very long. I think I'm only gonna be home for a day or two. Um, and then there's something else. So I don't know. I'm still working to find that balance. Um, if you ask my ex-wife, she would probably say I travel too much. Because um, I travel a lot. I, I did travel a lot. It's um, it's what I do. It's, it's my living. It's my it's a huge part of who I am. 
and um, and I, I will always, I think I will always travel unless something happens to me or maybe someday. I think maybe when I retire, I think my retirement may be more about not traveling than than traveling. But uh, for now, at least for the immediate future, I'm, I'm a traveler. That's who I am. You know, Jen knows that about me. Jen understands that about me. And both me and Jen are people that can appreciate alone time, can appreciate being by ourselves. We both need time away from each other. And uh, we both agree that time away actually makes, you know, once you see each other again, it's actually a, it's kind of a cool feeling, you know? I don't know, it, it, it sounds bad, but like being away, then when you see someone, you haven't seen them for weeks, and you see someone again, and it's really awesome. It's 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 a special feeling, whether they're having to see the same the same person every uh, every uh, every day. We just passed we to Gainesville. I saw a, a sign there for the Natural History Museum. I may have to stop there sometime. Love love my natural history museums. So let me know in the comment section. Does the Gainesville have a good natural history museum? You never know. Sometimes you go to cities. And the natural history museums are really small, just a very small little little uh, presentation. Sometimes they're another epic, they're just massive. And sometimes you just don't know until until you show up. But yeah, I think I hope now that I've moved in, now that I feel at home in my own home, and now that I'm at a place that's more centrally located, because that's one of the things. Like you know, why I didn't just stay? with Jen, why I didn't just move in with Jen was just where she's located at, was located at in Rochester, which is very difficult for me to go on road trips just because it was so far north, it was so far from from Florida, from a lot of the places I like to visit, um, that it just, it didn't, it didn't suit me. And it, the weather didn't suit me. Um, I didn't like the cold, I didn't like the winters. And Jen, honestly, Jen didn't like the weather either, Jen. Um, you know, because of her health, wanted to, was actually planning on moving somewhere else before she met me. Was actually had considered moving to North Carolina before she even met me um, for for the weather. So it ended up coming together pretty nicely. But yeah, right now it's kind of about figuring out um, my schedule, my balance between work and home. Figure out how much time I want to spend at home, how much time I want to spend on the road, how to uh, make those things work. I think doing videos every day may be unrealistic. Um, you know, I go through periods where I put out videos every day. Sometimes I slow down and go to every other day. Um, but I really like doing videos every day, and you guys seem to really like the daily videos. So I don't know. I don't think it's it's realistic to do because I don't want to do. I don't want to do home videos just because I feel like I have to do a video. I don't mind doing home videos. I don't mind showing you guys the home, but I don't want to do them just because I feel like I need to do them. Of course, you know, I always got Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, an hour and a half away, so I can always go over there for the day um, and, and film, but I'm going to need to take some days off, and um, I don't know, I kind of have to figure out, you know, how I'm going to split my time between home and the road, so that's all something I'm trying to figure out. Um, yeah, right now I'm homesick. I would love, I would love to just, like, spend a month there, but, uh, but I don't think that's realistic, just given how I film and, and the plans I have. So we'll see how February goes. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about going back down to Florida uh, next month. Um, go back. Uh, always suck to film. Always like the parks. I didn't get a chance to go to Universal. Uh, maybe I want to see what Universal's doing for uh, for Mardi Gras. I think SeaWorld and Busch Gardens have Mardi Gras celebrations too, so it might be fun to do the theme Gras, Mardi Gras circuit. I could go down to actual Mardi Gras, which I've done before. That was a lot of fun. I don't know if I currently have the endurance at the moment to do Mardi Gras. Maybe next year. There's always next year. There's always next year. I'm trying to do a lot of like events that um, that are kind of on my bucket list. Things that um, that I haven't had a chance to do before. Um, sometimes, you know, it's like I worry, like, if I'm going to travel to somewhere, I'm going to film, am I going to be able to recruit, recoup my travel expenses, am I going to be able to recruit, re recoup my money, make it worthwhile, but 
I've been thinking recently and I just have to kind of get out of that mindset. I just have to do what I want to do. Go and see. If I want to see something, I want I need to go and see it. That's how this channel was born. So some things that I was like financially, like I don't think I can make my money back on that. I think the travel would be too expensive. I think I'm going to do some things. I think I'm going to do some things I'm going to lose money on just because I, I grew this channel because I did things I couldn't afford because I wanted to do them and then made videos of it. So I think we may be going back to that philosophy of just do it. If you want to do it, do it. And um, if I don't make my money back on them or if I only break even, that's okay. That's okay because, um, you know, it's all building the channel too. You know, you, that's how you build a channel. You do things, uh, you put your things out, you put things out there, you can't play it safe. You got to just do what you're passionate about, do what you're feeling about. So. I had an idea to do something that I've been wanting to do. I don't think, I don't think it's gonna, I don't think my video is gonna make enough money to uh, to cover all the travel expenses, but I think I'm gonna do it anyways. And uh, hopefully that'll be coming together soon. A few other things I wanna, big things, like I wanna, I got, uh, when I visited the Kentucky Derby Museum, I really thought I wanna go to the Kentucky Derby. And I think a lot of things like that, a lot of big events that I would maybe wanna do just once in my life. Gasparilla, did Gasparilla, don't know if I'll ever do Gasparilla again. Maybe, maybe, but I do it a different way than I did this last time. I was, I went in with not enough information. I was way in over my head. It was not. I feel like I showed up at like spring break thinking I was showing up at a Renaissance festival. But uh, <laughs> that's what happens. That's about traveling. You know, traveling has a certain amount of the unexpected mixed in, and I will always have to deal with the unexpected when traveling. So yeah, tonight it's gonna be a long drive. Right now my ETA is 1.23 a.m. That will always increase when I'm driving because I'll always have to stop to eat, stop to pee, stop to use the bathroom, stop for rest areas, stop just because I feel like stopping, stop to maybe play a little bit of Pokemon. <laughs> just whatever. Uh, never, never make it, never make, actually make it home when the ETA says, because I don't know, I get distracted easily. And I like breaking up my drives. It makes it easier to me. I remember my uh, my ex-wife when we traveled, she always wanted to go, no stops. We'll stop to go to the bathroom, stop at a drive-thru to grab some food, but we just need to get there. We need to not dilly-dally. And I was the opposite. I'm like, no, I want to see all these cool things. I want to stop and visit. That's when I started traveling alone because I could stop and see all the things that my ex-wife did not want to see and did not want to wait in the car while I, while I explored. So, um, I have that freedom now to uh, to do that and uh, to see all the things I want to see. So I don't know. I don't know what time we'll get into the house. We'll see. Uh, it could be really late. Um, I don't know. May have to. May have to. Just may have to sleep in uh, tomorrow morning. Hey there. It's, uh, it's cold out. Cold out there. It was uh, fairly warm in Florida. It is icy here in uh, in North Carolina. But the important thing is that I uh, I made it home. It's about 2:30 in the morning. But uh, before before I can uh, before I can go to bed, I gotta get this video edited. So. Uh, I'll be up for just a little bit longer, and then hopefully I can uh, get some sleep. I'm a little tired. <laughs> These long days have been adding up. You know, a couple, couple, couple long days, and then a uh, a very long drive. It's about nine hours altogether. Of course, I stopped, ate some dinner, went to the bathroom a few times, got some gas. The normal stuff that you know adds up quick when you are. Uh, when you are traveling, but happy to be home, at least for a few days, to sleep in my own bed, to sit on my own couch. Maybe, maybe if I get lucky, I can watch a movie or watch a little TV. But uh, so hopefully, some big plans coming up. I'll uh, I'll share that with you very soon, and uh, hopefully, you guys will come along with me because here, the Carpetbagger Channel, the uh, the adventure 
the adventure never ends. It never, ever, ever ends. So thank you <laughs> for uh, sticking with me here. If, of course, you like these videos, please subscribe. Uh, travel around the world. Not the world, really. More like the United States. Travel around the United States, filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, other fun stuff. Doing personalized messages on Cameo, as well as selling enamel pins. All the information is in the description. And all those things. Help keep this train on the track. As well as this car on the road, this boat in the water, this dirigible in the air. Thank you, my friends. It has been a long time out on that long, lonesome road. But for now, at least for tonight, this once in the back.